The following story was submitted to us through several voice messages. The person who shared her story did not want her voice put on the video for privacy. I have dictated her messages into written format and then narrated it. Many scammers now pretend to be famous people online. In this case, pretending to be a famous Nigerian music artist named Burner Boy. They will often mirror what the real artist is doing to make themselves look legit, including following the real artist, then telling target victims they're doing whatever the artist is doing. The target victim's name was changed to respect her privacy. This is my encounter with who I thought was Burner Boy. I know this sounds crazy, but for a whole year, I thought I was in a relationship with a Nigerian hip-hop star. My name is Sandy, and I live in New York. I follow Burner Boy on IG. I'm a huge fan of a lot of Afro beats, and specifically Nigerian-based rap and Afro beat music from that area of Africa. I would always comment on his IG photos and posts. I would always hope he would heart react or reply a comment to me. I followed him for years. Even before he was super famous, I was a fan of his music. Our birth dates are a week apart, too. One night, I received a heart react on a comment I made about his upcoming tour. I was shocked as it was from his IG profile. At least I thought it was during that time. He then sent me a DM. It was from Burner Boy Official. He said it was a private account he used to message superfans and that he had been watching me comment on his IG for months and appreciated me being such a big fan of his music. I was excited. I never really thought it wasn't him. He chatted with me telling me he appreciated all his fans, but his special fans who support him meant the most and he said he went through my IG profile and said I was a beautiful queen. We kept chatting on IG and he filled my DM with a few pictures of himself that weren't on his IG page. He said he was working in the studio on some new songs and was taking a break from recording to look through his IG when he thought he would write to me as he had his eye on me for quite a while. He asked how long I've been a fan and I told him for many years since 2013 when a friend of mine introduced me to his music. I told him I've been a fan of Afrobeat music for most of my life since I was a teenager. He asked me if I've ever been to Nigeria or to any other countries in Africa. I told him no but it's always been my dream to visit because my grandmother originally came from Ghana and I have traced my roots back to several West African countries, one of them being Nigeria as well. Burnaboy asked me to call him by his real name. Burnaboy is just his stage name. He asked me if I'd like to exchange phone numbers and that he only shared his number with super fans and asked that if he shares his number with me, I don't give it to anyone. I promised him I wouldn't share it and he gave me his number. He said he was in Port Harcourt, Nigeria for his recording session, so we exchanged numbers and added each other on What's. His What's profile picture was him, and we started chatting regularly on there. He would send me sound clips of songs he said he was remixing, and he said he was working on a best of album and wanted to know what I thought of his remixes. I was so happy to be chatting with him. He started to send me messages daily, photos, and audio clips of his recordings. He asked if I was single, and at the time I was. But I knew that he was in a relationship with Stephanie, another famous singer. He confided in me that him and her were having relationship problems, and that he wasn't sure how long they would be together, because she did not want children, and he wanted to settle down. He said she was cheating on him, or so he thought. He would ask me about my day, my job, the things I do, and again would ask me if I was dating. He always was asking if I was dating anyone. Well, I work a very average job. I work for a mortgage brokerage company. I mostly do tons of boring paperwork and help the process of loan applications for potential applicants. He would call me on the phone, and it sounded like him. I've watched all of his TV and radio interviews. His voice, his accent, everything sounded just like him. He would play music to me on the phone that he was working on, listening to the beats and asking me what I thought. He would tell me how much he would argue with his girlfriend, how things were not working out. He would message me at the beginning of his day and at night, and we voice chatted almost every night. 
He told me that he was going to go on tour soon around Africa. He said he was touring Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa for four months and then would be flying to the UK for his tour and then head to the US for a few dates in nine months time. He asked if we could stay in touch while he toured and I told him of course. He would send me photos of himself viewing the stage. His first show was in his hometown of Port Harcourt, Nigeria. He sent me photos of the crowd, the stage, the setup, everything. And they were photos that weren't on his IG, but he would post later on on his IG. So it left me no doubt at the time that I wasn't talking to the real man. I don't know how it would be possible for someone to post photos like that without it really being him. When he was in Port Harcourt, he and his girlfriend came to the show together and caused an argument. He said his first two shows were terrible because of her and that he wanted to end things with her. He said his manager, which is his mother, wanted him to stay with Stephanie as she was trying to convince her to start having children. He said he was so upset and called me crying, saying he wanted out of the relationship and that he had fallen for me and asked if I would consider dating him online until we could meet on his U.S. tour. At first, I wasn't sure what to say, but I was falling for him. I'd always liked him. He told me his life was so complicated, but he very much wanted to have a life with me and asked if I could think about moving to Nigeria as he had a home there that we could live in. I told him we'd have to meet first and see how things go, but that I really felt strong feelings for him like we could have a beautiful life together. He told me he was working on a song about me and he would put it on his next album and he sent me several photos of himself while we voice chatted. Again, these were photos I had not seen on his IG page. So it wasn't like this person was sending me photos that had already been seen by others. When he went to Ghana for part of his tour, he said he was having many issues. He said that Stephanie had gone back to the UK where she was working on an album of her own and they had another big argument. He said he told her he has fallen in love with someone else. While in Ghana is when he had trouble with the venue he was performing at. He said his mom, his manager, went back to Port Harcourt and that in Ghana there was some cultural issues between Nigerians and those in Ghana and that the venue was very dangerous and he felt unsafe. I told him he should cancel his show, but he said it was a contract. When he finished his show, he said the venue host was refusing to pay the contracted event cost. He said he got into an argument with the venue owner and that he was going to talk to the owner to try and resolve the situation. I told him to call me after, but I didn't hear from him. I didn't hear from him for three days, which made me very worried. His IG which he said his promotion team also posts on his behalf, had posted a few photos of his show in Ghana, so I assumed he was fine. I finally got a DM from him on his fan account. He said that the venue owner had broken his phone and that he had lost his bank card during the argument. He thinks the venue owner had his security guards take it from him during a scuffle. He asked me if it would be possible for me to send him $500 to help cover the repair cost of his phone as he was sending this message on his stagehand's phone. I asked him why he couldn't just access his account and he told me it would be 10 days before he could get a new bank card and that he was still on tour and it was a bad situation. He asked me if I could do a bank transfer to a Nigerian bank account. It wasn't in his name, but the person's name was Michael. He said he uses a money manager to handle any transaction for his privacy. He said he would send me back the money plus interest and a beautiful gift to thank me and ask me for my mailing address. Well, I gave him my address and I did the bank transfer. I truly thought it was the real singer and we were together. He asked me for a copy of the bank transfer so he could send his money manager to use the money to fix his phone. The next day, he was back calling me and said he got his phone repaired because of my help. He said he was sending me something special in the mail and to watch for it, but he wouldn't say what it was. He started asking me if I had an online bank account and wanted to make sure I got the money back that he owed me. I told him, yes, I do B of A online banking. He said he would transfer the money to me soon. 
It was about seven or so days later, and he was still touring, sending me pictures of his tour and calling me nightly. I received a package in the mail from an online jewelry company. Inside was a beautiful ring. He said it was a promise ring that someday he hoped he could marry me, but it was a ring to promise our love. I wore the ring the entire time we were together. He then told me that he wanted to pay me back for the loan and ask for my banking information, that one of his money managers was in the U.S. and was going to transfer me $2,000 and to please keep $1,000 of it and send the other $1,000 to his money manager in Nigeria, that Michael again. He said he was still having issues with his bank and his money manager needed that money transferred. I did receive $2,000 transfer from a U.S. bank account from a person whose account was in Ohio. I only kept the money he owed me and ended up sending $1,500 back to Michael, the money manager. I told him I didn't want his money, just what he owed me. He said that I was his queen and he couldn't wait to meet me as our relationship continued. He sent me flowers and gifts in the mail. I would get random gifts all the time, bracelets, rings, high heel shoes, clothing, and he would ask me to wear these clothes and take pictures for him, which I did, and the gifts all came from various online retailers. There were sometimes notes in them, like pre-written gift card notes saying, I love you, my queen, wear this for me when we meet, and so on. He continued with his tour, and there was gossip that him and his girlfriend were having romantic relationship problems. The Nigerian online celebrity gossip pages were saying that they were splitting up. He would tell me that things were bad and that his girlfriend was trying to steal his money. He told me things got so bad that he was fearful she was going to take everything he had earned. He said he had to place all of his earnings in an offshore account under another name just to protect himself. That she was jealous and he was scared. He kept on with his tour but said since he was hiding his money he was suffering while on tour and then I stopped hearing from him again. He said his phone service was shut down due to non-payment because of him having to shuffle his money around and he was hiding it. He asked me if I would be willing to loan him $5,000 until his tour ended and then he could get away from his girlfriend, end the relationship, and then gain access to his money again. He would often call me crying asking for help, that she was making his life so bad. I told him I would have to think about this loan. He repaid the last loan, so why wouldn't he repay this one? After a couple of days, I told him I'll do it. He asked if I would consider marrying him when he got to the States, and he wants to live with me in New York and leave Nigeria for good. So I ended up sending the $5,000 to his money manager, Michael, via bank transfer. By this time, he was in the UK doing his tour. We would meet soon, in just a few months and he said he was ending the relationship with his girlfriend but that he owed her money as she helped him co-write some of his hit songs and that he wanted to buy her out of the entire deal but if she knew he had a secret account she would ask for more money and he was telling her that he was broke. She requested $25,000 to end the songwriting contract and he could walk away from her for good and that she had moved her things out of his mansion in Lagos, Nigeria. He even showed me pictures he said she sent him showing her moving her things out. He said his manager was going to set up a recording studio near my home in New York and he wanted to live with me once he came on for his tour. We could apply for a marriage visa and he was coming here on an entertainer visa. It would be seamless. I told him to have his money manager transfer his money from his secret account into his money manager's account and then pay her off. But he said she would then know he had money and he asked me if I could loan him $25,000. I told him I don't think I could get that kind of money. It was just so much. He told me that it was okay and I didn't have to, that he would figure it out. He did ask if I could get him an iTunes card to help him with his phone. By this time I was in love with this man and so I bought him the card. We kept on with our relationship and he was extremely loving to me. He would call me all hours of the day and night before his concerts and what he was doing lined up with the post on his IG. For example, he would tell me that he was doing a sound check 
I would go on his IG page and his post would say, doing sound checks. He continued to tell me he was ending the relationship with her, but still arguing with her. We talked about him coming here and he told me that his mother, who again is his manager, was trying to get his entertainer visa finished for his big U.S. tour, but he said there was a problem because his money was in a secret account and the U.S. visa requires entertainers to show income and savings. He asked if I could transfer $1,000 to his money manager's entertainer account so he could use it to show the U.S. immigration that he had income for his visa. His life was a mess due to his now ex and hiding all his money from her well, it was complicated. He showed me his visa application and that they required him to show savings. He said his money manager put $4,000 in his account, but he needs another $1,000 to show the minimum $5,000 they require for the visa. Once he came to the USA, he would stay with me and we could apply for another visa to keep him here. He said his money manager was working on paying off his ex so she would be out of his life forever. I told him I would try and get the thousand dollars. He said he needed it within five days or his visa application would be canceled and he would have to cancel his tour. And if so, the fans would have to be refunded all of their money. He told me that he wanted to marry me and make me his manager as his mother was getting older and he needed a younger manager and that he trusted me with his life. I ended up sending the thousand dollars to his money manager, Michael. He told me his visa was approved a few days later. He had planned to be in the U.S. for the new year. As it got closer to him coming here to tour, we talked less and less. He said that he was busy making his new album, but I felt something was off. By this time, we had spoken and been in an online relationship for a little over 11 months. He called me one night and told me that his mother and ex had gotten together to plan on taking all of his money and they found out about his secret bank account. He hid this from me because he was so stressed and he finally confessed and told me that his money manager had also been talking to his ex and his mother about taking his royalties. He said he was going to fire his money manager and his mother as his manager and live life with me exclusively in the U.S. I told him to always be honest with me, and he can come here and record his music. We would marry and be a success together. He told me he was trying to break his contract to get his money and leave as his big tour was coming up. He said he had a friend who was helping him, a childhood friend who would help him get his money out of his secret account without his money manager knowing, but he needed a U.S. account to send it to. He asked me if I would be willing to use my account to accept deposits and asked if he could access my online account to remove only his money. At this point, I trusted him fully and gave him access to my online banking passwords and information. Soon I was receiving deposits in my account for all sorts of amounts from $100 to $4,000 and everything you could imagine in between. He also let me keep the $1,000 that he owed me from before. He told me he was setting up his flights to come over for his tour and working with his crew. He now had a falling out with his manager mother and his money manager. He had his childhood friend helping him until I could become his exclusive manager. His visa was ready to go and we were making plans. He said he was going to call me when he arrived in New York. I went about my work and my days trusting him fully. One morning I got up to message him good morning and he was gone from IG and gone from what's. When I tried calling his number, it didn't go through. I started to wonder if maybe his ex or someone hacked into his accounts. I checked again and his fan IG was gone, but his regular IG with millions of followers was still there. I looked at his posts and he had posted a picture of himself in Port Harcourt with his mother at some kind of awards show. I was really confused. I checked my phone messages again to see if maybe he got a new number or something had happened. I was so confused as he was supposed to be on his way to New York, but suddenly at an awards show in Nigeria? I received a text alert from my bank alerting me to a low balance. I have this set to where if my balance drops below $100, I get an alert as most of my bills come out on auto pay. 
I just got paid from my job the day before. So this was concerning. When I went to log in and check my bank balance, I was at $14 and some change. My jaw dropped and I checked both my checking and savings and there was nothing but 14 and some change in one and a little over $10 in my savings, which at the time I had a few thousand. There was withdrawal and online transfers galore, going out all over the world from Nigeria to the UK to right here in America, even charges from food delivery places that someone had food delivered in Florida and in Kansas. I called my bank and they closed my account. I had to actually go to my nearest branch to file a fraud alert. They were going to investigate, but looking over my charges and activity, they said it was suspicious as I had gotten money deposited from all over the world in different accounts and then withdrawals from online investment transfers, food delivery, and all sorts of transfers from my account to other people's. I didn't know a single person my money went to, nor did I know anyone in Florida or Kansas that ordered food deliveries. I went to his IG, the one with the millions of followers, and sent him a DM but received no reply. I filed a police report and explained everything to them. They told me it sounds like I was involved in fraud and made me feel like it was my fault and that the bank and police are looking into the deposits I accepted and the money I transferred out. If anything, they made me feel like the criminal. I went to his official website, sent an email to his entertainment company, and also received no reply. I again and again tried to call the Nigerian number I had from him, but the calls didn't go through. I'm not sure if he blocked me or who I was talking to at this point. I even contacted a Nigerian podcast that always featured his music. I finally received a message back from one of the Nigerian podcasters who told me it sounded like a scam as the real artist only uses his verified IG profile, his mother is still his manager, and all of this sounds like fraud, as the real artist has a net worth of over $20 million, and he wouldn't need my money or my bank account. The person who messaged me said it's likely fraudsters pretending to be the real artist, and this is very common. My bank account was closed permanently by the bank, and they blacklisted me from opening another account for five years with their bank. They said I was involved with wire fraud using my account and gave access to a potential criminal to use, so I was held liable. I was in shock. I was hurt. Why would a criminal send me gifts, jewelry, and let me keep money? I was advised to contact the EFCC about this situation. I also contacted a couple of Afrobeat podcasters to try and share my ordeal, but none of them responded to my request. I've come to learn that scammers pretend to be their favorite Nigerian artists and target fans. I was naive that this even took place online. I trusted him fully, and I never found out who I really spoke to. I did find out the photos that he was sending me that were not on Burner Boy's IG were photos that were on a Nigerian music site. So he was stealing the photos from other places to try and make them look like he had just taken the photos just for me. Thank you for letting me share my entire ordeal. And we'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. This happens quite often where scammers try and pretend to be artists and they will mimic an artist's profile on social media and then find a target victim who happens to be a super fan and try to scam them out of money. Remember, real singers, actors, artists, those in the entertainment industry, they don't need your bank account. They don't need your money. They don't need your help. They have all they need from their managers, their workers. Everybody can help them but you do not need to help them. So if you're talking to someone online and you think they're a famous singer or actor, keep in mind it's very likely a scammer, especially if they ask for money and gift cards. If you'd like to share your story, you can find us scammingscammers at gmail.com. You can also find us currently on our Facebook page, Scamming Scammers Cyber Education. You can drop us a message there or drop us an email on our Gmail. We will narrate your story into a video. Your story may help others. Until then, stay safe. And when a celebrity asks you for money, take a second look as it's probably a scammer in disguise. Take care.